Hey, what's up everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy and welcome to part 63 of my ultimate guide to Logic Pro. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use the MIDI transform window and transform presets. The MIDI transform window allows you to batch process MIDI events in various different ways. You can choose presets, you can use the presets as a starting point to build your own settings, or you can just open up the MIDI transform window and start from scratch. The MIDI transform window is definitely a leftover of older versions of Logic, but I still find it quite applicable for many unique MIDI operations, and it's a huge time saver when you don't want to have to manually edit MIDI notes one by one in the piano roll editor. But before I get into the tutorial, I wanna quickly tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Boombox. If you're a music producer or mixing engineer like me, you'll really love the collaboration and commenting tools at boombox.io. With Boombox, you can upload finished tracks for your clients or share stems or multi-tracks with the batch upload feature. Invite your clients as collaborators who can then leave timestamped feedback on their tracks. Make revisions to the tracks based on your client's feedback and upload new versions of the track until it's finished. You can even keep your clients from downloading the final mix until they pay their final bill. Head over to boombox.io and sign up for a free account today to get four gigabytes of free storage. Okay, so first, how do you access the MIDI transform window? The easiest way is just to press Command-9, and this will pull it up, and it'll also pull up the last preset that you used. You can also go up to Window, Open MIDI Transform, and then yet another way is you can come down into the Piano Roll Editor, go to Functions, MIDI Transform, and you can start off with one of its presets. So the first one I wanna talk about is fixed velocity. And I'll also show you how you can use this preset and a few others to create your own custom settings. So let's start with the fixed velocity preset. So this is exactly what it sounds like. It allows you to fix the velocity of all notes in a region or a selection to the same velocity value. So the way that the MIDI transform window works is you have various MIDI conditions at the top so these will select events by the conditions. So this is a way to sort of filter which events are used. So you could say, okay, I wanna take all notes that are on the note C sharp one, and I want to fix their velocity to 100. Or I could just select all notes, all status bytes that equal a note as this preset is doing. And then the operations on selected events down here is the actual operation that's being applied to the selected notes or the selected events. Now, most of these are gonna be hidden when you choose a preset. It only shows you the parameters that you actually uh, need to see. But if you click down here, you can select, or you can unselect, hide unused parameters, and it'll show you all of the parameters. So if I just use the preset fixed velocity, I'll go ahead and hide those parameters. This says select events by conditions. The status is equal to a note. So it's saying it's only gonna select notes and all of those notes, we're gonna fix them to a velocity of 100. Now you can double click, you could type in another value, maybe 80, maybe 127, whatever you want. And then what you do is you select the MIDI region and you can choose to select the notes. So it'll just show you the notes that it's applying this operation to, so it only selects them. You can choose to operate only or select and operate. So if I choose select and operate, you'll see that all of the notes have been conformed to a velocity of 80. If I wanna pull that up a bit, maybe 120. And again, it selects anything that's a note in this region and fixes its velocity to 120. So why have an option for select only and operate only? Well, if you want to select just certain notes to apply this operation to, you can do that. So I can just select these notes here and then click operate only, and it'll only apply this operation to those notes. So all of those notes have been conformed to a velocity of 120. Or I could select the key here on the uh, keyboard in the piano roll to select all of those kick hits and select operate only, and it only applies to those notes. Now, another way to do this is you can set different conditions. So if I go and unhide the conditions, I could say, I want to apply this to notes that have a pitch that is equal to this kick drum, which is A1. So C1's down here, A1 is up here. So what I could do is I could say, okay, 
I want to apply this to notes that have a pitch that is equal to, and then I type in A1. So now I can click on select only, and you'll see it only selects those notes that are in A1, and then I can apply the operation. Why would you want to do this? Why not just click on the notes or select the notes? The reason is when you're working in large MIDI projects, sometimes it's easier to just select multiple regions and apply an operation to multiple regions rather than opening up each region and selecting the notes that you want to pick. So in some ways, when you're again, when you're trying to batch process MIDI events, the MIDI transform window is super helpful. Now, what I could also do with this preset, if I just go back and reload that preset, I could create a new setting where maybe I want to set things to a certain velocity range rather than a fixed velocity. So let's close out that drum beat there, and I'm going to move up to this piano track. And in the piano track, I've got, you know, I've got, it's not a wide range of velocities, but it's a range of velocities. And again, if I pull up that fixed velocity preset, and this time, if I change the operation from fix to range, I can set a range for the velocities. So let's say I want this to be quite a bit softer, maybe between 30 and 70. I can select all of those notes, either by clicking select only or by just hitting command A in the piano roll editor, and then click operate. And now the range of velocities has been lowered to 30 to 70. Now, I think most of these velocities were already over 70. So it looked like it fixed them all to like, I think 70 was the value. But maybe I'll go with something higher, maybe like 60 to 85. Like I want a really narrow range, but I do want some, you know, velocity variation. I could do something like that. So I've got some notes that are light green, some that are dark green, but they're all within this 60 to 85 range. So this basically functions like a velocity minimum and maximum limiter. It sets a limit for the minimum velocity and a limit for the maximum velocity. Now you can do this with the uh, velocity processor MIDI effects plugin as well, but this is another way to do it and affect the actual MIDI data. Now, if I think to myself, okay, this is all right, but maybe I want it a little bit louder, maybe like 10 or 15 velocity values louder, I could change this from range to add, and now I can just type in you know, 10, 15, whatever I want, select all the notes, operate, and now I've added 15 to all of those notes. Again, you could do that here with the velocity slider, but this is a way to batch process. And you again, you can batch process multiple regions at the same time. You just have to select all of those regions. You can also randomize values, and I just set a range for the randomization. So maybe I want this to be random between 50 and 80. I can select and operate, and now I'm getting a random selection of velocities if I wanted that to be a much wider range, I could maybe set this to 40 to 100. Again, select and operate. And now I have a wider range of random velocities. Likewise, if I wanted only certain events to be selected based on velocity, I could unhide my parameters. And I could say all notes that have a velocity that is less than or equal to we'll say 60, all of those notes, I want to add 10 to them just to bring up the softer notes. So I'll just click on select. It only selects the notes that are at or below 60. And then I can apply that operation to only those notes. Likewise, I could say notes that are greater than or equal to 90, I want to subtract seven or eight from these. So I click select, it only selects those notes that are above 90, and then I can apply the operation to those notes. There are also various different randomization presets up here. You can randomize pitch. So you can just create completely random pitches. You can randomize velocity, as I just said. You can also randomize pitch, velocity, and length if you want just uh, you know, complete uh, aleatoric music for some reason. Um, so some of these presets I don't really use uh, too much. The crescendo function I also don't use very much because you have to set a 
uh, position, like a range for the crescendo. And I find it just easier to use the uh, velocity controls here to create crescendos and, and diminuendos. So I just find it much easier to do it here with your mouse rather than trying to do it with the MIDI transform. Double speed and half speed, I don't really use these either because if I wanted to double speed or half speed a region, you can simply just use the trim tool, hold option, and you can bring things in, bring it out, and you can shorten or lengthen MIDI recordings in any way you like. Uh, again, some of these presets are leftovers of a time when Logic didn't have these sort of intuitive functions. So again, I don't really use the crescendo, double speed, or half speed functions at all. Now, one function that is kind of cool is the humanize function. So let's say you have a MIDI recording where the timing is, you know, completely locked into the grid. In fact, let me go over to the, to the drum beat here. So this is all completely locked into the grid. Let's say that all of the notes are the same velocity and everything's 100% quantized to the grid. And you know what? Let's even make the note lengths the same. Um, you can do this with the MIDI transform window as well. You go to functions, MIDI transform, and you pull up the fixed note length preset, select all of the notes, set what you want the length to be fixed to. Remember, this is bars, beats, divisions, and ticks. So one division here is going to be a 16th note. If I hit operate, all the notes are going to be a 16th note in length. But let's say you want to do the opposite of that. You want to give this a bit more of a human quality. There's a preset in here called Humanize. And what this does is it randomizes the velocity plus or minus 10. So all of the notes are going to be shifted up or down at random by 10 in terms of their velocity. Also, the length of the notes will be randomized plus or minus 10 ticks. And the position of notes will also be randomized by plus or minus 10 ticks. Now, let's say that I don't want to mess with the length. All I have to do is click here and set this to through, and now the length will no longer be affected. Maybe I want to randomize the velocity a little bit more. Maybe I want to randomize the position of the notes a bit more. I can pull up or down those values. I can select them and operate, and you'll see that all of the notes had a slight randomization applied to them to better humanize the recording, just to make sure that the recording isn't perfectly locked into the grid. So I use this a lot when I'm typing in my MIDI sequences and I just want to make the recordings just sound a bit more organic, a bit more natural. A big pet peeve I have with Logic is that there's no uh, note end quantization like you have in Pro Tools. Like in Logic, you can quantize the front end of a note but you can't really quantize the back end of a note, at least not with your normal time quantize features. However, you can use the MIDI transform window to do this. So if you select the quantize note length preset, what this is saying is all notes, so all status bytes that are a note, will have their lengths quantized to a minimum value of 40 ticks. So the endpoint of notes will basically be quantized to tick values that are divisible by 40. This preset with these settings doesn't really do anything for us from a musical standpoint, but if I wanted to quantize to the grid, I could just simply change the quantize minimum operation value. So remember, this value is bars, beats, divisions, and ticks. So what I'll do is double click and then replace this with zero, space, zero, space, one for division, space, zero, and then hit enter or return. So now what I'm doing is I'm quantizing the end of notes, the length of notes, to the nearest division on the grid. So this is going to be highly dependent on what uh, division you have set here. Mine's set to a 16th note. So when I hit select and operate, it's going to quantize the end of each of those notes to the nearest division, which again is a 16th note for me. Now let's say that I wanted to save this setting as my own custom preset for this project. So if I wanna use this function again within this project, I can easily recall it and I don't have to change any values. 
all you have to do, it's a little confusing because the menu, you'd think, oh, I need to create a new transform set. That's not really what you need to do. All you do is you come up here to the preset name and you give it a custom name. So I'm going to call this quantize note end to division. And one quick thing I want to point out here is this really isn't the note end quantization. This is really note length quantization, just to be very clear, because that's the function here, length, not note end. So what we're doing is we're quantizing the length of notes to the nearest division, although functionally it does the same thing. It quantizes the note end as long as the note start is also quantized to a division. Then hit enter or return, and now you will see that preset show up here in the menu. So if I completely close out the transform window, if I go into my functions, MIDI transform, you'll see that down at the bottom, quantize note end to division. So now what I can do is go into any other MIDI recording I like, select the notes, pull up that preset, hit operate, and I'm done. So I can easily quantize the end of notes or the length of notes to the nearest grid division. Now the only caveat to these custom settings or presets is that they are not global. So while they will be saved in the project you created them in, they will not carry over to other Logic projects. You can also use the MIDI transform window to convert other types of MIDI data, not just notes. So for example, I have some modulation wheel automation here. And let's say for some reason I need to convert modulation wheel over to another MIDI CC. Maybe I wanna convert this over to CC 11, which is the expression pedal. What you can do is you create a new transform set. Just click create. This is basically just gonna go back to the default setting with, with no uh, parameters pulled up. And what you have to do is define the conditions and then the events. So you do this with the status byte. Remember the status byte defines the type of MIDI message. So I want to affect MIDI notes that are equal to control, that's control changes. I want data byte one I want to affect control change messages whose first data byte is equal to one. Now remember, modulation wheel is CC1, so that's where that first data byte comes from. I wanna convert data byte one from one over to, you fix it, to 11. So what that's going to do is it's going to only select CC data that has a data byte value of one, so mod wheel, and we're going to fix it or change it to CC11. So now when I go and look at CC11, you'll see all of that automation that I drew in with the modulation wheel is now being applied to the expression pedal. So if you've got a synthesizer where, you know, maybe you played in a certain automation and it works really well for modulation wheel on one instrument, then you change the instrument and it's some other CC in another instrument, you can easily convert those CCs and do it permanently. Now you can still do this probably a little easier using the modifier MIDI effects plugin, but this is a way to physically do it within the MIDI region and not rely on a MIDI effects plugin. All right, so that's a quick flyover of the MIDI transform window in Logic Pro. There's obviously a lot more you can do with this thing. It's really all up to your imagination and uh, what, you know, values you want to affect. You know, what conditions do you want to apply to MIDI values and what operations do you want to apply to those selected values? So I find the MIDI transform window an incredibly helpful tool for batch processing and sort of niche uh, MIDI transformation events where there's not like a common tool in Logic that you can use to complete that operation. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.